This is my July favorites, actually on time for once. I have a bunch of makeup, I have a couple little fashion things, and one postpartum thing that has been awesome during postpartum. So I'll start with the makeup. A couple of these things are repeat offenders. The first being my Makeup Forever HD Stick Foundation. I had to go back and look on my channel because I thought I just talked about it last month, but I think this, it wasn't. It was in my May favorites, but I'm pretty much done with this. This is in the shade 128. It's the perfect match for me right now that because I have a little bit of color on my face, really I try to avoid any color on my face, but I think it just happens that way. I do tend to go a little bit heavier on the bronzer now because the rest of my body is tan and my face is always like two shades lighter just because I'm so paranoid about any more sun damage than I already have. This foundation is full coverage, it's long lasting, it lasts me from the minute I put it on in the morning and it still looks exactly the same at night. I am highly considering using this as my wedding foundation. I've been going back and forth between this and the spray foundation because they're both so, they just make your skin look so flawless. So I had some pictures done, we had some newborn photos done and I used this or no, I used this in my maternity pictures and I used the era in my newborn photos. So I wanna see how they both photograph and that'll be the determining factor. But this is just swipe and go. I just write from the tube and then I blend it with another favorite this month. Again, I've talked about this before. This is the Tarte Kabuki brush and this has been what I've been using to blend out that foundation. It's incredible and I also use this for concealer too on my face. It's super wide and dense and it blends it in and it makes it become your skin without taking anything away. I love the Beauty Blender but I use that for more of my liquid foundations. I find with cream foundations and the Beauty Blender, blender sometimes it tends to take off the makeup and product that I have and this just does the opposite. So I really rely heavily on this for concealer and cream foundation application. Do not use this with my spray foundations. It's just, the Beauty Blender just works so much better than that. I have my little guy here, so if you hear little noises, that's where it's coming from. And then two concealers. One is an oldie but goodie, but one that I kind of forgot that I had and have been since using it since I rediscovered it. It's the MAC Pro Longwear. And I love this for my face concealing. Dark spots, brown spots from melasma, any unevenness, hyperpigmentation, this covers great. And a few times I've been wearing this because I really don't do my makeup every day unless I'm filming or have somewhere to go. And But I do, like I've said, I've become kind of insecure about my skin and the hyperpigmentation. So I don't like leaving with nothing on my face. And so lately I've just been relying on a little bit of concealer. And the last couple times I wore just this, I put it on those spots just to even everything out. Dan actually said, your skin looks really good. I like your makeup today. And I'm always shocked because I have such little makeup on. I just do this and like maybe a bronzer or a blush. It's really full coverage. It's also a great eyeshadow primer. I don't use it for under my eyes because this shade is too dark, but it would make for a really great under eye concealer. What I do use for my under eye concealer, I've been using this for a while, but I've kind of been on the fence and now I've been relying so much on and I just really like to look really bright. Eyed, especially like I said if I'm not wearing foundation I still want to have a little bit of brightness under my eyes this is the Tarte shape tape and I use the color light sand this is bulletproof lately I've really been noticing it the most because when I go to take my makeup off whether I'm using bioderma or some kind of oil based breakup cleanser and I go to take off the rest of my face this is it stays put under my eyes I have to go in with another application of either uh, bioderma like on its own on a separate cotton or like a whole other oil based cleanser to just break this up so this will be the found the concealer that I'm gonna use for my wedding for sure and this is amazing for under eye I'm still battling a little bit of fine lines but I do find that if I set this right away with some finishing powder I like the Laura Mercier translucent powder on a damp beauty blender, it doesn't tend to settle into those fine lines. You can still see them, but the makeup doesn't cake in those fine lines, so it's great. I've been really good about applying eye cream, and I've really been loving this one from Tarte. This is the Tarte Marajuka C Brightener Eye Treatment. I kind of was slacking for a little while, not gonna lie, about putting this on, but now because of those fine lines and I'm just trying to avoid any more creasing under there with makeup, I make sure to put this on in the morning and at night. And I've said it to you guys before for a long time. I am not a big believer in eye creams and eye serums. I think you definitely need to use one, but 
I don't think those really high priced expensive ones are any different than ones that you can find at Sephora or even the drugstore. I think just having an extra layer under there on top of your moisturizer that you're using on the rest of your face is important, whatever it is. I've tried a lot of eye creams. I really haven't noticed a difference in how they perform or what they do. Just that I want it to be really hydrated under there. So I wouldn't go crazy spending a lot of money on eye creams and potions and lotions for under your eyes. Just make sure to apply something because I do notice a difference with how my concealer applies when my under eyes are super hydrated. Brow product. This I again kind of rediscovered as I was clearing through my makeup collection. This is by It Cosmetics and it's their Build a Brow in Universal Taupe. And I use it with the Sigma Flat Definer E... 15. It is a flat brush and I just find that this applies it the best. It's kind of like a almost like a pomade consistency. It's definitely a cream creamy product but it's pretty thick. You don't need a lot. You just need to tap your brush in it and it goes on beautifully and I find that the shade of it matches and goes perfect to give my brows the most natural looking application. They don't look too dark. They don't look too light. It just fills in those sparse areas and blends in with my natural brow color. So I've loved the Anastasia or Anastasia Brow Wiz and even the ones I've been trying, the different pencils from Makeup Forever, but I think this is definitely my favorite as of right now and I just feel like it gives my brows that fill in that I so badly need and it also stays put and it also doesn't attract powder and stuff doesn't get trapped in my brows which I appreciate. A lip liner. This is from the drugstore. This is Jordana's Easy Liner Retractable Lip Liner in the shade Tawny. I've really been into using MAC Taupe lipstick which is a huge favorite of mine. I think it's been discontinued. You can find other colors like this. It's kind of like a brownie mauve but this is the shade. This is the lip liner that I use underneath it and sometimes I just use this on its own. It just gives me a really pretty neutral but still brightens up my lips a little bit when I have on a full face of makeup. My lips kind of disappear and I don't like to have like a super dark color on. I just like to accentuate my lips like I have something on them and this liner is great. I love that it's retractable. I love the cream lip liners. They're just easy to apply and they stay on. You can even throw a clear gloss over it or blot it for a more of a lip stain but that is awesome. And then I think I've mes mentioned this to you guys before, but this has been my go-to my entire pregnancy and even into postpartum. And this is by Elsie Organics and it's her chocolate massage and body oil. She made for me and then started selling a solid cocoa butter without any essential oils for my belly to just keep really moisturized and hydrated. I was very itchy throughout my pregnancy. But this, is, this does have essential oils in it and I've been loving this on my legs of course. It not only moisturizes my legs and it's not greasy, I can throw leggings on right after, but it makes your legs have this nice sheen and look really nice and toned. And I've also really been loving this on my belly postpartum. That skin is still kind of loose and jiggly and still somehow itchy. And so I love this when I get out of the shower, when I go to bed at night, I just kind of rub some on my belly and also on my butt. I, I stay away from here because I'm nursing and I don't want him ingesting anything. But this smells so good. It smells like it's chocolate. It's just chocolate. Like even I was putting it on Addie's legs the one day and she's like, mom, I just want to eat it. It smells so good. So that is all of my makeup stuff that I wanted to share with you. As far as fashion, I shared these on Instagram. You know, I have different followers on here. These I found at Target and they are so pretty. They're little slip-ons in this really pretty mauve, blush mauve color. And then they have all these pearl and crystal embellishments, which you guys know me and this stuff. I'm obsessed. They were very affordable, I want to say under $30, and just with the trends that are happening in the fall and some of the things clothing-wise that I've picked up from the Nordstrom sale and the leggings that I have, like my white leggings, black leggings, blush might be a little too matchy-matchy, but I just think that these are going to just be such a nice little slip on and go, but still a little bit dressy when I feel like not being a bum. <laughs> um, these are really nice and they're really comfortable. And the last thing I want to just mention is my belly bandit. I showed this on an Instagram story. I'm wearing it right now. I have been wearing it since I gave birth. I wore it my entire six weeks postpartum with Addie. It definitely helped me with Addie. It's definitely helping me this time around. And it is part of the Nordstrom anniversary sale right now. So I wanted to just mention it because that sale ends this week. It is a little bit of a higher price item. You also can get it at Bye Bye Baby and use your coupons, 
but I wanted to mention it because I've been getting a lot of questions about it. My size is an extra small, and you'll see when I first put it on after I delivered, I could just barely get it to fit around me, and now I kind of have like an excess that kind of lays over top. So just with that, I've noticed a difference of how much I can stretch it. It's very comfortable. Obviously, it's hot outside, so when I go outside with the kids, I take it off because it's just too hot. But I love it because it gives me really good posture. It's comfortable when I'm nursing, and it just helps to kind of tighten up or make you feel, anyway, more tight with your skin still being really loose. And obviously, the main thing it does is helps to contract and shrink your uterus. But I really have found it's effective. This is really what I can attribute, I should say, my my belly kind of going back. It's not all the way back to where I want it to be, but it's definitely a major difference in the last two weeks since I gave birth. So wanted to mention that. Hopefully you could take advantage of this sale if you want to scoop one up. I do wear it all day long. So I put it on in the morning when I get dressed and I don't take it off until I get into my pajamas at night. A lot of people do sleep in them too. I just, at that point, I've worn it all day. I do take it off, but there's no harm in sleeping with it if you want to. Those are all of my July favorites. I cannot believe summer is almost over. I feel like it went by so fast. I say that now, but living in it, going through it, being very pregnant and uncomfortable, it did feel like it was dragging on at times. But now I'm like, oh my god, I'm filming this. It's like July 31st and I just cannot even... I can't wrap my head around like the kids are back to school in a month. It's crazy. I feel like they just got out. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope to have my birth story up on Friday. I just haven't sat down to film that yet. I wanted to get these, these other videos up before it's time for August favorites. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.